Hey guys, it's Riley. I just wanted to show you something. Um, I posted this video today that got some traction and it was just on my Twitter, me showing off kind of this awesome functionality that Blender has in the latest 3.0 release of this asset library. Now, the asset browser has been around for a few versions, experimental versions, and I was actually surprised in the comments. A lot of people were either unaware that this was a thing or they didn't know how to get it set up in their own file. So I just want to make this quick video, hopefully around five minutes or less, and show you how to get the asset browser set up in a clean file in Blender. Okay, so let's just jump over to Blender. I'll open up a, a new scene that's more or less default. And first thing we're gonna do is, um, you're probably not gonna see this, um, right click and let's split the window and navigate over here to the asset browser. Now this is different from the file browser, different functionality. Um, once you start using it, you'll get it. But basically this asset browser, it's just a quick visual way to import objects and materials and animations and other things into your scene. So when you first open it, it's going to be set by default to current file. Now this is if you have a scene and you just, you have all of your objects contained in one blend file and you basically just want a visual way to browse and import um, new files into your scene. Now we don't want that, we want to set this to our own custom location. So in order to do that, we need to go to Edit, Preferences, and then come down to File Paths. Now this will be located under the Asset Library section, and this is where you can hit this little plus icon and add a new location. Now, what you're actually adding is you're adding a folder that has any number of blend files contained within that folder structure. For example, this first one that I added is my um, Google Drive. The reason I have it in a Google Drive is just so that I can have access to this library regardless of what computer I'm on. Now, in this Google Drive, I have all of these Kitbash hard surface um, kits that I've downloaded over time. and. If I go to any one of these, you'll notice I have a blend file here that has all of my objects within it. So there are literally thousands of Kitbash hard surface objects in these um, collections or in, the, in this folder structure. So you don't have to have it all in one folder. It can actually be embedded in a hierarchy of different folders. I, so I just wanted to show you that. So after we've chosen that location, we can give it a name. I just called it Kitbash Hard Surface. We can close out of here. And if I go back to current file, we can set it to Kitbash Hard Surface. Now don't panic if you don't see anything yet. We have all of my assets here, but chances are when you open this up, there's not gonna be anything here. And that's because you actually have to go to the individual blend files and you have to choose the objects or materials that you would like to be included um, within the asset library or the asset browser itself. So I have all of these different kits um, from different blend files and let me just jump into one of them and show you how to mark things as an asset. So I am just going to go open the blend file location on one of these. So this is just a blend file within that Google Drive um, folder hierarchy that I had that I showed you earlier. So as soon as this opens, we're basically just gonna see a bunch of hard surface items, models. Um, so if we come here, all of these in the outliner, if you see, they have the this little um, row of books icon next to each of them. Now all that is, is it's an indicator to show you, hey, this is included in your asset browser. In order to mark something as an asset, it's as simple as right clicking it in the outliner and saying mark as asset. Or you can clear the asset. So when you clear it, book icon will disappear and it will no longer be included over here on the left in our asset browser in any of the scenes. So let's just make sure everything is selected. You can search F3 and search for asset and let's just make sure everything is marked as an asset. Now what that's gonna do is mark each model in the scene as an asset. Now if I wanted the material to be marked as an asset, I can go to, um, you know, it doesn't matter because all these objects have the same material, but let's just go to an object. And if we expand here, we can find the material 
and we can right click and mark that as an asset as well. Now I've already done that so it has the um, little book icon there. So once that's done um, we have this whole blend file everything is going to be included in our, in our library. The thumbnails are automatically generated. One thing to keep in mind is if your objects are coming in like sideways or upside down something you're going to want to do is in your blend file make sure that you um, hit control A and you apply the rotation. Uh, you can apply the scale as well. That's similar to like freezing your transforms in Maya. Um, it's just to clear all the data and make sure that nothing's getting rotated when it generates the thumbnail. Okay, great. So um, once that's all done, we could just save this file real quick and let's close out and go back to the empty blend file that we had with our asset library. And now everything um, that we've marked as an asset should actually just show up in the asset browser. We have all of our objects. We should also have yep, our material there, um, which was very uh, cleverly named material. So now in order to get these into our scene, it's as simple as dragging and dropping. And something that I love about this asset browser is just how fast everything works. So I mean, Again, these are thousands of assets. I can immediately go to any one of them and start importing them into the scene. Um, the different colors of my assets here, this is just personal preference. Uh, I didn't want to go through the time to alphabetically name everything and sort things. And I mean, you could sort things by name here, um, change the uh, icon size. I just want to quickly visually see what assets are within um, the same asset packs. So. In order to do that, I just, within every blend file with a single asset pack, I colored all of the objects, one single material, and I changed the viewport, um, the viewport display color to that, that material that I chose. That way I know, okay, all of these green items are from one pack, all the orange, all the blue, and so on. It's just a nice visual way for me to browse things. Um, one other quick note that I wanna demonstrate here is uh, this append reuse data. What does that mean? Um, basically, if it's set to reuse data, it's allowing you to, if you alter one of the items that you import, all of the items will be altered. So let me just demonstrate that real quick. Let's grab this little cylinder thing and I'll just make a quick adjustment to it. Now, if we import that same cylinder, it's gonna have that same um, alteration that we made. If we don't want that to, ha that to happen, if we want every time we pull one in, it's kind of its own thing, then we set it from append reuse data to append. And that's just gonna allow us, now if I make a change to one of them and I use this again later in the project, that change is not gonna be present. And then link um, is super efficient. Uh, it's basically just locking all the data. So in order to change anything in this model, like I, I can't even go into edit, oh, edit mode in this. Um, very memory efficient, but offers no flexibility. You have to actually go into the original blend file and make changes to the item in order for that to work. So again, just to show that I could right click here and open the blend file. And let's see if I can find, here it is. So now if I come here and make changes to this in the original one, um, if I were to say, I think I have to save that. So if I come here and I save that, hopefully this works. I haven't actually tried this. Then let's reload the asset library maybe. Yeah, I, I hate, you know, I always do this. I, I try to do things live and uh, they never work, but um, in principle, this should work. Let me just come to a new scene here. And of course it's not gonna work. There we go, it worked. So you can see what the, the link um, does. You're actually linking from that original file and uh, you can't change anything in it. It's just pulling straight from the original file. So I don't use that one a ton. Mostly, honestly, I'm using just append, I'm not even using append reuse data. And let me just go back to the original and uh, undo this and save it again just so I don't screw up my library. So 
anyway, that's how you do it. Um, you can also use materials. So uh, this is my little green material from one of the other packs that I marked. And you can quickly just drag and drop and assign things. And it's, it's pretty slick, it's pretty easy. And it's available in the latest official release of Blender. So go check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around. Thanks.